To remember is not to recall information the way a computer recalls it. Each time you remember something, you reassemble it from traces throughout your brain. Every time it's a little different. Some traces change, some traces go missing. At a certain point, the line between memory and imagination disappears. How can this be sad when it's just neuroscience? I still find it a little sad, all these years later. What do we have but an agreed upon history we tell ourselves we lived? I wonder how much of our lives really happened, or how we really felt along the way. I don't know. I'm rambling again. I've developed the habit of rambling. Without your impatient nature here to shorten conversations I always wish would unspool. Your mother warned me you weren't much of a talker. I think she was a little surprised when I still married you. All of a sudden, you're more patient than I would like, so now I ramble. Anyway, the nurse says it might help. He's a sweet man, but not very convincing. The neurologist has expressed no such optimism. She's very frank. She said there was no good outcome to this mess. The best we can hope for is the lesser of tragedies. They say you're not conscious, that you're not really here, but it seems premature to start missing you. Right now, as I lay my hand on your chest, I feel you calling me. Forty times a minute. Lub dub. Lub dub. Forty is a little slow, or so they tell me. They tell me so many things. I have a hard time keeping track of it all. I'm going to sit down now in a chair. Here. I'll be right here. I'm going to keep rambling because you can't stop me. And the sweet nurse says it might help. went into an absolute frenzy. They followed us even after we disembarked on the island, as if you were some kind of vending machine, and if they waited around long enough, you might puke again. you had a switch that could just turn off the sun. our last real adventure before we got our dog, Molly. You just can't go away for months at a time with such a love at home, no matter how well that love is tended. You miss touching her. You miss, weirdly enough, her barking. Though you may not miss the smell itself, you do miss how she farted so loudly she would wake herself up. I know it's a small and seemingly unimportant detail, but life is just a series of details and we go about ignoring most of them. The truth is, Molly wasn't just a dog. The day we drove her home from the pound was the same day we silently agreed to start a family, at which point I stopped wanting to travel, for the world's splendors were waiting in our bed to be made.
fire hazard you bought for two dollars at a garage sale. I used to get a little jealous of this piano, how you would sit with it, how you would transcend this world for some better one out there in the music. You would come back so happy. scheme of things were only a fraction of a hair's width from Earth. It makes me a little ill to look out at the old light, to wonder what else is out there. I mean, there could be anything. You, even. Your energy. Some bit of you. A ray of light. hours end in 10 minutes. Thank you. When I think back, I can't remember exactly what happened. How does one blood test end this way? And yet there you are, every night when I dream of you blue light falling over your still body. I can't shake the idea that one day you might move. Every day I come and wait for that to happen. Hello? Hi. Um, I just need some... Yeah, you see, I'm writing something. Are you not the receptionist? Do I look like the receptionist? Um, yes. I'm a neurologist. I make like 400 grand a year. How much do you make? Um, is this not reception? Do you see a sign that says reception? Okay, where am I? Alas, that is the question. What are you writing? You know. I know? Maybe you don't want to accept it, but you know. Somewhere in the pit of your stomach. In the pit of my stomach? Metaphorically. Now move along. Can't you see I'm busy? I don't understand. Okay, well, move along. Nobody found what they were looking for by standing around like an idiot. Huh. 
not. I thought this was your room. It feels so familiar, but you're not here. Bonafide romantics have always been a rare breed. It is both exhilarating and deeply sad to find one. They love so hard they end up suffering. It's their lot to suffer. Still, I can't help but admire them and hope someday to be one. Who is this even hooked up to? If this isn't your room, why do I feel like I've been here before? Why do I feel like I've been here forever? Visiting hours are now ending. Please find the nearest exit. The only exit. <laughs> okay, I guess that means I'm coming back tomorrow. <laughs> Oh great, you're back. Can I get some help? With what, exactly? I don't understand what's going on. How am I supposed to resolve that? Everything I know, you know. Um, what? Right. Well, you'll come around to the idea. Can you just tell me what you're writing? Didn't we just have this conversation? Please. No. Please. No. Oh, no. Well, now you know. Do you feel better? What the hell does it mean? Can you just move along? Move along! Where the hell am I supposed to go? My wife is not here. Why isn't she here? Where is she? Remember what I said before about standing around like an idiot? Why don't you go through the door? Bon voyage! I know I don't sound any different, but I'm some other less conscious part of you. And I think it's time I take over. Look at those legs again. I know you don't want to, but you must. Are those not your legs? Are those not the shoes you bought some while back after Molly barfed in your loafers? I'm confident, if not exactly sure, that's what happened. The thing you have to remember is that memory is an impossible thing to reckon with. It doesn't record truth. More often than not, it protects you from it. Dear Leonard, this room feels familiar because it's not my room. It's your room. And it's your name you've been looking at. I know. I'm sorry. It's hard. It's been a little over two years now since that sound took you away from me. The ugly sound of one car trying and failing to stop. The driver was just a boy. He comes some days after class to visit you. When we cross paths, I often find him crying. The guilt outweighing his books and hanging the same off his shoulders. Neither of us can stop coming to both your mothers and the neurologist's chagrin. They say it's time to move on like they can't see you're still breathing. I know intellectually they're right. I'm just not ready even after 742 days. Would Leonard please report to the exit? Leonard, to the exit, please. I 
I honestly don't know what happens next. All I know is that time is passing, and at some point your life support must be unplugged. When and by whose hand is beyond knowing, trust in the end it's for the best, and that she loved you. Take one last breath as we go yonder. Here we go to see what's out there.